Hey everybody, Peyton Marine here, and let's take a look at what's inside the box. Now this is going to be, um, I guess, a, an abridged version of the live stream I did earlier where they kind of previewed everything. And this article went up while they were doing the live stream, so you could see a little bit more um, better in, in detail. Um, but um, I'm just going to kind of go over my thoughts on the things that they put in the box. A lot of it is, well, all of it is exactly what we thought would be from kind of the leak uh, data uh, deep dive data mining that some people had done and found some some pictures um so yeah so we'll kind of go in there and i'll kind of give a little bit more um insight or what they kind of talked about a little bit in the um the live stream to kind of give a little bit more context now the first thing i want to point out with this is this is not a starter set this is not a ninth edition start playing or anything like that they've made that pretty clear that this is just a new edition box set. This is just to celebrate the ninth edition is coming out, um, and it has the rule book, and then um, kind of like a, almost I don't know if it's a campaign book, but they said rules to play those particular armies in the box. Um, but it doesn't come with dice or the like the little um, plastic ruler thing that like the little twelve inch ruler that it normally um, the starter sets come with. It's just going to come with the new rule book with kind of like a. I guess kind of a special edition kind of cover now they said that um, these are going to be available for a limited time now it's not a limited edition necessarily like a limited edition release of like a like you need to buy it now or you're never gonna get it they said they have a ton of them they have plenty of them and like if they run out they'll make more but they're only going to be available for a limited amount of time whatever amount of time that is they didn't say they also haven't released the price or the exact release date yet but I did find that interesting that it's gonna um, I don't know it's almost gonna essentially be like uh, uh, was it Shadow War I think was the first because uh, when they re when they came out with Kill Team the new Kill Team um, that box set that first one with Adeptus Mechanicus and Gene Steelers was available for a decent amount of time and then it kind of disappeared, but they never really said that it was going to be a limited availability. Like it was only going to be available for a limited time. So a lot of people didn't get it or they put off getting it. And then next thing you know, it's gone. And then they re released the newer one with the Space Wolves and the Tau. Um, but um, yeah, so that one disappeared. And then I th I'm pretty sure it was the Shadow, uh, Shadow War Armageddon when they came out with that um, kind of hybrid necromunda kill team attempt i think i really think that was kind of the precursor to the kill team they were kind of testing a lot of stuff out and i actually really liked um shadow war armageddon a lot and kind of kind of sad that that ended up being just kind of a one-off thing and not continued um as they wanted to continue with kill team instead um so anyway point being though this is a limited thing so um a lot of rumors going out there on price um, the kind of the one that I've heard a, a lot is it's gonna be 150 US dollars which is a really good price and uh, for a limited release even though these are not going to be multi-part um, the again that's where you kind of get your value like you're trading off value from that like so while the multi-part kits will cost more and everything you're still getting a, a good value here um, in general um, plus, for not being multi-part, these are still some pretty awesome um, models in general. So, let us roll down. Um, so, they have like kind of an intro video where they show a bunch of stuff. Now, here is a picture. And it's, uh, you can kind of see. But, yeah, this is basically what we've seen before. We've got the bikes. We've got all like the blade, guard, lieutenant, captain, chaplain. Salt Intercessors, uh, the Judicar, or Justicar, however you say it, uh, Ancient, and now these are not Hell Furies. I don't know if they were to be Hell Furies and they decided to rename them or not, or Hell Furies are still going to be a thing we, we have yet to see, um, but as right now these are the Eradicators, uh, and no idea, they did not talk on these guys at all, and we only get to see a better picture of them in this article they, they you see them go by in the video and you see them on the sprue that they showed in the video but they never even touched on them. they didn't touch on them when you see like they just go by in the video pretty quickly and then when they show the actual sprue and they're on there they're talking about like everything else but they don't talk about 
these guys at all. They don't. I don't know. I don't know why they're just saving it for community article later as it gets closer to release, probably. Um, but I'm trying to think. I feel like they touched on just about everything else. Necron in the box, though. So. All right. So then uh, there's also a pretty cool new little video here. Um, so here we have the Primaris Captain. Now this model looks amazing, I think, just like that. And with um, this visor that he can put up, I really like that. Um, there are three head choices. You can have him no helmet, uh, helmet with the visor down, or like this, which this is most likely what I'm going to end up doing just because I really love the way that looks. Again, we have the Primaris um, Lieutenant with a Neo Volkite pistol. Um, bum, bum, bum. Here's that new pretty awesome chaplain. A lot of people thought this might be, I can't remember his name, I want to say Cal Calcius or something like that. He was a ultramarine chaplain, uh, pretty famous Tyranid war veteran. He was also in the, uh, was it Death Watch Overkill box set? He was a, uh, um, he had a model before, then was updated. So the newest model that of him came out in that Death Watch Overkill set. Um, and this, he's a very similar pose and look with the face and everything um, with the half, I guess, not, not quite bionic eye, but bionic eye and skull piece. Um, is very similar to that character. Um, but they just kind of say here that he's just a, just a, a chaplain, just an updated chaplain. Um, they also mentioned that they didn't want to kind of make all the chaplains look similar for people to really start expecting certain things from the Primaris line. So like the last chaplain they had having a hood and everything, and they didn't want to do the same thing with that, um, with this one. Um, I do like how he's kind of got the, the ribs kind of here, kind of going back to that, um, that chaplain idea to, you know, just swapping this head out and putting a, a skull or one of those reaver helmets or something would look pretty, pretty awesome because really, really cool. I kind of like the idea of, um, you never see the chaplain's face. They always have that skull helmet on or something. Uh, I think that's pretty cool. Um, then we have the Judicar or Justicar, Justicar, however you want to say it, Judi Judicare, Judicar. I don't know. They said it like 50 different ways. <laughs> um, so... A cool thing here in the article here they talk about um, you don't need to be an expert in high gothic to know oh where is it that he brutal execution of Blagus and the temporal temporal mortis um, which this in the rules league was a rule that um, that or a thing that was on his data sheet that you, like kind of everyone thought was part of why it was fake because no one's really mentioned it um, which I think that uh, leaked data sheet is even more like I, I definitely think that's going to come out that it's, that's 100% correct because um, this was definitely on there. I could definitely see mortis, but I couldn't tell what that first word was on its temp tempor mortis. So, um, so that just means you can manipulate time to ensure the death of his quarry. So um, you have that again. So you see he's kind of part of the uh, chaplaincy or the I don't I can't remember what their office is called. Um, because he's got the same black armor. He's got the skull. I'm not really sure why they have to have this veil. I'm not really exactly the biggest fan of that. Um, and then you have, like, again, kind of the ribs on the armor. Something else I didn't even notice the first time I looked at this, but they pointed out. Um, but this shoulder is uh, missing the shoulder pauldron. Now, I did notice this right here with his robe or... Uh, cloak whatever kind of like not on him so i thought that was kind of weird like you know always trying to like do like a little slinky i'm wearing my little black armor and i'm going to expose my shoulder which i thought was just like that's kind of odd choice but then in the video they gave a little bit more um reasoning to it and then i was like oh, okay i guess that kind of makes sense but then i mean you could just create a cloak or whatever where you just cut that part off i guess and then you just have a cloak that only goes over one shoulder essentially you know um but anyway the reasoning for that why he doesn't have that shoulder pauldron or that robe there is he um does that so it doesn't restrict the movement of him swinging that giant executioner blade down which 
Um, when you're wearing giant power assisted armor, I guess I could see where the shoulder polyger might get in the way of the range of moment, movement, but um, I feel like this jacket would probably just tear away under the stress of power armor um, servos like moving it. So, all right, um, and then coming down, you have Blade Guard veterans, which we've seen a lot of these guys, and again, um, just really awesome. Um, cool models. I, I, de I definitely like the whole aesthetic of all these new guys for sure. Um, I, I can't wait to get them and get them painted, but at the same time, I, I, I'm, I've got one project I'm working on for somebody else, and once that's completed, I need to get really trucking along on my own stuff because um, I'm so far behind on, on stuff before all this comes out, but I know I won't catch up before all this comes out, and I'm going to be so tempted to start working on a lot of this stuff. So uh, I just feel like I'm it's definitely falling in that never-ending thing again um, but anyway moving on we got the new uh, I guess ancient is pretty cool looking I'm not really sure why they decided to put like the cloak coming up here it's kind of whatever I guess um, and then they kind of have like this old I guess the idea is this is like an old fallen brother that they kind of put up there um and then i guess it's missing a hand right here and like that's what he's carrying here and they called it a skeleton key in the video which they were being funny it's not like necessarily got a special rule or anything but um yeah i just thought that was funny um they didn't really touch on why all of a sudden like with these and the blade guard they're deciding to like tuck their robes kind of under and over and the way they're putting them on they didn't really uh, touch on that at all um, but now we have these guys here now there's a couple things here that I think is awesome and hilarious um, so we have the eradicators so I don't know if these were to be hell furies or we're still waiting to see hell furies like I said um, but I'm definitely I, I love Meltas just because I had my salamanders army years ago and um, I always have a special place in my heart for my salamanders um, so seeing Meltas again for Primaris is just awesome I can't wait to get these guys. I'm very curious if the multi-part kit is going to give them other weapon options or if they're going to be other weapon options similar to the Hellblasters where they're all just going to have whatever these... I don't even think it says what kind of melted guns these are. It just says, I think they're just long-range melted. Yeah. If you're absolutely positive, have to eradicate armor threat. Aptly named Eradicators here just that. Clad Gravis Armor armed with long range melter rifles. They exist to do the job. They're nothing short of peerless in its execution. So, all we know is that these are long range melting guns, which I guess is probably 30 inch range, but that's about all we really know. But now, if they come out with a multi part kit, um, or there's also potential that I could see that these, well, no, because they said this box set is only going to be available for a limited time. If it was like a new starter, like starter starter i can't even say starter set um like dark imperium was uh then i could see these maybe being exclusive kind of a thing to this set because we've kind of started seeing that but dang it now that i think about it they might these might be exclusive to this set and then when this set disappears like with shadow um the shadow war box um then they might show up in a new space marine start collecting as the exclusive unit in there and then we might finally see a standalone suppressors kit I don't know that's just a thought maybe not uh, but I could definitely see um, I could definitely see some of this transitioning over to a start collecting um, probably the assault intercessors um, these guys the eradicators and I think what else? One, uh, probably a, the the captain and the lieutenant, maybe. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I would say the bikes too, but that just seems like I don't know. They I don't know if they would necessarily split, but they they basically did split the shadow war box in half and take the space marine half and make that the primary start collecting box. So maybe, maybe that's what the plan is. Um, but if not, we'll see. Maybe these will be. Um, kind of like Hell Blasters, and have a new um, uh, multi-part kit where you get like 
three variants of whatever this melted gun is. So you'll have like a heavy version, this mid range or mid tier one, or whatever you call it, and then like an assault version where it's a shorter range again, but you get like two shots or something and a little bit different. Um, but then it would be like, well, if that's the case, are these going to be replacing Hell Blasters? Um, I guess it's probably not because of the fact that um, there's only three of them. So Hell Blasters, you can bring five to ten. Um, are these, I'm assuming as of right now, there, there are only three. I doubt you might be able to bring a max of six, maybe. Um, which actually, now that I think about it, you probably will be able to bring six max, three minimum. Because I think uh, aggressors, yeah, aggressors you can bring six. So I can see these you can bring six for sure. Um, so that actually, but they might be, they'll probably be a bit more expensive than Hell Blasters, which seems kind of crazy. But I don't know. It'll be interesting to see for sure how these guys come out. Um, but the other thing I wanted to point out, which I thought was just hilarious and awesome, um, is the fact that the sergeant is black because for whatever reason, people had like such a problem. And I, I don't know, it's just funny, like, I don't know, maybe I'm not much in Ultramarines lore, or I just see things a bit differently, but when I saw that, um, oh, I can't remember what the name of the book was, it was like an Indominus Crusade, the first book series, and it had the black Ultramarine on the front, and there was like this big huff and puff about like, oh, there's no, there's no black Ultramarines, like, why do you have to have a black Ultramarine and all this, and, um, I just remember when I first saw it, before I even saw all this, like, I guess, controversy about it, um, I didn't think twice about it. I just, I guess I just figured they did have, you know, multiple different ethnicities in their um, chapter. I I guess I didn't, I don't know. I know they have a very Roman-esque um, style to their armor and stuff, but I don't know... I guess I don't. I mean, I I don't know enough about like ancient Rome to know if they had. Um, I mean, I definitely know they had multiple um, ethnicities and cultures that they basically assimilated into the region into the legions um, because of conquering all over the place. Um, and I guess I don't. And I know there, you know, slavery of many different um, nations that they took over was a thing. But I don't know uh, if they had. Um, I guess actual black legionnaires in the legions um, that'd be something i would be interested in looking up but regardless that doesn't mean that a fantasy sci-fi um <laughs> war game um has to subscribe to something that it's kind of yeah it's on aesthetics it's based on you know, ultramarines are based on ancient Rome kind of aesthetic and things like that. Sure, and 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 things like that. But that doesn't mean they they can't have black members in the chapter. I don't. I just guess I don't understand that. Um, I definitely have seen and know of chapters because of the gene mutation that things happen to them, like the fact that Raven Guard are super pale, or um, like Cacardon's same deal. Um, the salamanders themselves have a coal black skin um, with red eyes like red glowing eyes which is pretty dramatic so I don't know there's a lot of a lot of that that I just you know I, I get that aspect of it but like the ultramarines kind of seeming to be one of the more I guess stable gene seeds um, I don't feel like that there would be any of that kind of stuff happening where it would be changing anybody's skin tone to a certain kind. So it would just be whatever the recruit's natural skin tone is when they're brought into the chapter. So, um, and again, they're span, I mean, they span multiple worlds in the Ultimar system. Um, and I'm sure they, the skin of those people run the gamut. Um, so I don't know. I just thought that was ridiculous. And then now, um, I think this is hilarious that they kind of get into like, and I don't know if this was intentional, if this was painted long ago before all this, but either way, I love the timing of it because it just kind of like forever who has a problem with it. And I've already seen people commenting on this again, like, oh, it's weird to see a salamander in ultramarine armor. And that can be taken one of two ways. One, because they're obviously melted guns, which is a, th a thing that salamanders love. 
but it could also be the fact that you know the sergeant is definitely has black skin he doesn't have coal black skin like salamanders but anyway um but i think these look cool i'm not a big fan of like whatever the heck's going on here um i don't know why they have that handle up there it's kind of weird to me but and then also the fact that so essentially they're only going to be firing from the hip um and it's supposed to be like a long range melt so i feel like you would want it to be a pretty accurate thing and i don't know how just aiming from the hip is going to be granted you could pull the whole like well they have cybernetic aiming and all this stuff from their helmets and all that so it doesn't really matter but um yeah so i don't know at least that's how i'm going to justify it now in my head <laughs> So, uh, then we have the Assault Intercessor Squad. Uh, really nothing too crazy here. Just some really cool dynamic posing. Um, again, they, they didn't really talk about any rules or anything when the when these guys get a multi-part kit or anything. Um, nothing really more to say other than that. They didn't say whether uh, the sergeant can take anything other than a chainsword or not. Or if he always has to take a chainsword. And also what other pistol variants he can take. Um, and then also the rest. I'm assuming they can only ever take he heavy um, bolt pistols. But he can take a Neo Bolkite. Uh, I'm assuming he can also just take the heavy bolt pistol. Or is there something else can can he take? I don't know. Um, and then we have the awesome Outriders. Love these things. Um, I know a lot of people don't like the whole ground clearance thing or whatever. It's kind of whatever. Um, kind of one of the things I didn't like or I was kind of upset about was that they weren't some sort of grab. And I like the idea that all the primary stuff coming out maybe has like a grab thing. Um, but they brought um, the, the, like the model designer on and he basically explained um, that they wanted to kind of go back to that aesthetic of most of the Marines vehicles having kind of like a fist shape or like very hard and bulky front ends where it looks like they can just punch through a wall. And that's definitely what you get from these. Um, and then also um, didn't want everyone to just start assuming that they could guess kind of like what uh, a new Primaris vehicle or, or thing might look like if all Primaris vehicles coming out are going to be some kind of a, a hover repulsor thing. Um, he didn't want to set that, like a precedence that like it has to be a hover vehicle. So I guess that's why they kind of uh, backtracked on this a little bit. All right, so now we have the Necrons. I'm going to briefly talk on these just because I don't really play Necrons. I, I had a Necron uh, Shadow War Armageddon team um, that I, I liked. And they've always, like any of the armies, I wish I could have every single army, honestly, because there's just so many cool aspects to everything. And this is going to be really hard. I've already um, got somebody that I'm going to be trading the Necron half to so I can get the Space Marine half. So I'll have two Space Marine halves for the price of one box, uh, which essentially just comes out to be the same. But... Um, it's gonna be really hard because these models look super amazing and I hope that this paired with the fact that um, a lot of the exclusive models coming out this year are Katakin, um, meaning new guard models in general. Um, I'm kind of hoping that this is the addition that obviously we're seeing new primary stuff which is cool but also kind of sucks in a way just because like for myself I'm so far behind in painting that I don't need anything else to put me even further behind but um, but anyway, the, uh, the fact that, uh, I'm hoping that this is the addition that older kits are getting upgraded. So yeah, maybe we won't see anything new for guard as far as new units go. I, I feel like we'll still see a few here and there as codex comes out. That seems to be the thing as a, a codex will come out and then also like a new unit or two at the minimum. Um, but I'm also hoping that maybe along with that model that, that unit or two of new um units you're gonna get um like an updated like guardsman just basic infantry guardsman kit um something like that or like tau i mean we just recently got um and i say recently it's what 2016 i think so four years ago they just got a new fire warriors um box upgrade or they're gonna say uh, update um, where then they also came out with breachers. So now you can make breachers and fire warriors with them. But uh, a, one of the kits is pretty old. You have old stealth suits, old um, pathfinders are another one. Uh, Vespin are pretty old. Pretty much any of the fine cast kind of stuff. 
um, Crute. Those are all prime candidates for uh, re-sculpts to a very dynamic thing. Tyranids for sure have a ton of old models that could get updated and basic infantry stuff because the thing here is they redid the warriors. So I could see um, at, le at the very least, I think across the range, most basic infantry troop choices could be upgraded pretty good. Like the term Termagant Hormagant, um, I mean, they're, they're very old. They're like, you put them together, they're just very odd to put together. They kind of tip over easy, but they can totally redo those and make some really cool dynamic poses with them. Um, I think I would, I really, really, really want to see some new gaunts. Like, I don't know why. It's just to me, I'm just picturing my head like, you know, they could have like rock outcroppings that they're kind of climbing up over. You know, just, I just would like to see it, even a tail on a gaunt not shoot straight behind it but even have kind of a little curve to it and like the gaunt kind of coming around or something like i don't know i i could yeah i'm just hoping that maybe that's that this edition this edition is let's go through and let's update all our basic troop choices and get some new models out there for them um so going on with that again i'm not gonna have much really to say i don't i didn't i guess i didn't pay as attention to this they didn't really talk rules anyway but um, they definitely talked that they were trying to go more toward that royal court feel um, with Necrons. And I think they, I just think they hit them out of the park. Like they're, they all just look amazingly awesome. I really like this paint scheme, this kind of like old bronze, copper kind of feel to it. Um, so we have this Overlord. Uh, you have the Royal Warden. Again, like these are all like characters. Um, they are kind of like characters of the royal court or something. They have this really cool kind of, I don't know, they just have this really awesome feel to them. And like a lot of people, yeah, they're like tomb kings or whatever, but um, yeah, they do. I mean, they're really awesome. Uh, Plasmancer. These guys I really like too. Just the very, very alien robot aesthetic to them is very awesome. Um, the Crypto Thralls. Then you have the Scorv Peck Lord, which is really, this is one that you saw in um, the first announcement trailer. Just awesome, awesome, awesome. And then you have kind of like his henchmen, I guess, his Scorv Peck Destroyers, which are also seen um, in the trailer as well. Um, and then we have this Plasma Site. Uh, now this, to me, the way they kind of describe this, uh, reminded me a lot of, um, like the cherub, the armored, armored cherubs, I think of there, where they're like carrying melt the bombs or arm or uh, ammo and stuff. So you could get like a, like a free reroll or something is what it was before. I can't remember what they do now. Um, but I remember before in, uh, was it six, maybe, I know it was a seventh edition, maybe in six, but you could take an armored cherub with like your devastators and it would grant you like a re-roll uh then you have this cano cano tech reanimator which is very uh war of the worlds look or the tripod series which is a great book series which i would love to see someone to make that book series into a like a a good movie not like some just straight to netflix like i'd like to see a decent budget put to it. i think it'd be a really good sci-fi series um, when I say sci not the TV, not the TV channel, uh, sci-fi, but <laughs> like just science fiction. Anyway, that's what this reminds me of. And I, th um, I think that looks, it's just, yeah, it's so cool. Um, and then have like this rubble and stuff down here too. It's just very, all together awesome. And then some new scarab swarms. Um, and then of course the big, uh, kind of cool thing I think here is these new Necron Warriors. I know there's been some kind of talk about like them losing that glow rod or that clear acrylic rod. Um, I, I don't know. I, it makes sense, but at the same time, um, this looks to be extremely simple to just clip out still or maybe not even install it. I'm not sure how these are put together yet. Um, but you can easily clip that out and still put those clear rods in there. And there's plenty of places to get clear acrylic, um, the right size. 
um, because already there were a bunch where people were getting them in different colors so they could kind of customize the color that their uh, Necron Warriors had. So easy, really easy to do. And then you could do the same here too and replace those two. Um, so I'm, I actually expect to kind of see that. So then a lot of people still have these new ones match maybe old ones in their army. Um, and the other cool thing that they mentioned too that you could do um, is these heads can be like all degraded and beat up and scarred like they are, but they have options to have completely clean and fine heads. So you can have basically like, you can make them look like they're super, super ancient and kind of run down and just coming up, or you can have them all look pretty well kept. So I thought that was pretty neat. Um, okay, here's that uh, core book that they were talking about. Like I said, it's just nothing on the front, just some pretty cool epic art um, and core rule book. They said that there's also not gonna be like a quick play or anything. Like this set is not necessarily made for those new to the hobby. It's definitely welcome, and it's a great. It's, it's not that they can't get it, of course, but it's not one that new players should be able to expect to get and not need to buy anything else, meaning um, mostly dice and rulers and stuff like that. Um, but it definitely has two armies, definitely has the rules to play those two armies um, and the core rule book, but it doesn't have like a quick play card in there, which honestly, like how hard would that have been just to throw that in the box? But anyway. All right, and what do we have here? The Edge of Silence. Uh, so this is, I guess, the book that has all the rules for these two in it. So much more than a booklet. However, it includes lore around the Indominus box is based. Assembly guides. They got a transfer sheet here, which I don't know if I can zoom in on this a little bit. I kind of want to see. Uh, that's about as much as I can get in there. Um, I don't see. Not sure what this is down here. Maybe. I'm trying to see if there's any new like campaign. There's a uh, campaign badges. And if there's any new like campaign badges, because those are always fun to add to say like you know this guy fought in this campaign or something like that. All right, well, that is it for this. Um, I'm going to end it here with that, and then I'm also going to go into the next uh, community article, which uh, at the very end of the live stream, they shot up another trailer that just kind of like showed you some quick glimpses at some other stuff coming um, that I was like, whoa, I was pretty excited about those. And there's already a lot of controversy and flack or disagreement on those as well so um yeah so with that uh hopefully you enjoyed watching thank you for watching check out the rest of the channel see what i got going on there uh, if you haven't uh, you can also check out my facebook page and see all the projects and things i got going on there i update that pretty regularly um and if you have any suggestions or ideas i definitely try when i can to improve um all my videos and content as best i can um, but sometimes it takes time money and new equipment and that takes time and money to acquire or whatever so um but if there's anything else or any suggestions you have i definitely try to do um, what i can when i can um and with that if you haven't i would definitely appreciate if you subscribe to the channel and like i said check out the rest of what i got going on i've got other reviews um just thoughts on the hobby and then also hobby tips and tricks that i've experienced or that i've kind of come up with on my own or seen others do and kind of refined or whatever and put my own twist I think made them a little bit better so um, all right well until next time